Hello, everybody. I love it when the broadcast mics up the players, but I don't like that you have no idea what they're talking about. So I hunted down the actual plays so that we can get a little more insight into what the players are thinking. The first clip is uh, Chris Paul getting Trace Jackson Davis pumped up, so we're not going to analyze that one. The second one is this very mysterious clip. So here's the clip synced up to the actual play. So I don't know if you could tell, but Chris Paul was reorganizing that entire play. Go, 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 go. Hey. So the first yell was to get everyone's attention. And then he sweeps his hand, telling Clay Thompson, who's off screen over here, to go to the other side of the court. Hey. And then he points to Trace Jackson Davis right here, who's going to turn and look at him to indicate that he should go over here and set this pin down for Clay. And then, to top it off, he flicks his finger while looking at Brandon Pajemski in the corner, telling him he's got to clear out. And in fact, he yells, get through. Get through! So Pajemski immediately starts clearing out this side. Trace Jackson Davis is going to set a pin down screen for Clay, who runs up. Clay's defender is going to get stuck on this screen, and then Clay will be free for a catch and shoot. And that's exactly what happens. And then for bonus, the next little mic'd up clip comes directly after this play. Hey, 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 get D-Lo! BP, get D-Lo! He's yelling, get D-Lo, BP, get D-Lo. So this is Brandon Pajemski, BP. And there's a question about which small is going to guard D'Angelo Russell. And Chris Paul clears up any ambiguity. And indeed, Brandon Pajemski is guarding D-Lo. You might have thought that Chris Paul was a bit grouchy with Trace at the beginning of this play? Go, 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 go! Well, you would be right. He explains later on that Trace has to be faster at inbounding the ball so the Warriors can push the pace. Hey, go a faster. I know, I'm talking about getting the ball out of bounds. But all is good. Trace gives him the thumbs up. This last clip I find the most interesting of all. It's Chris Paul trying to correct Andrew Wiggins on the way he runs a certain play. You just came up there, right? Come down. So now it's pitch or it's keep. This play had happened right before the end of the quarter. Andrew Wiggins comes over and Chris Paul does a potential give and go. Now he's going to cut around Wiggins so Wiggins can threaten this handoff. D'Angelo Russell does a reasonable job fighting around the screen. Wiggins tries to use butt technology to knock D'Lo off his path, but he stays close to Chris Paul. Chris Paul, I don't know if you can tell in this, but he looks a little bit sour about the way this play went. He throws his thumb over his shoulder to Pajemski, saying, come and take my screen, but no one seems to have their heart in it. This is devolving into a Wiggins ISO up top. And you look at Chris Paul's body language, I think you can see Monsieur is not satisfied with the service. What was the problem with this play? Problem is that this is a one option play that Wiggins here is doing a handoff, and if he doesn't hand off properly to CP3, then the play is just dead. Now there's nothing really for Wiggins to do other than just do an ISO. In contrast, this is another give and go. Staff throws it to Trace, but he's over here, and so now he has two options. He can pitch it to Steph Curry. Steph very elegantly rolls in. Here's another example. Brandon Pajemski guns the ball over to Draymond. One option is he can pitch it to Steph Curry, which is what everyone in the world thinks is going to happen. Austin Reeves following Steph. Even LeBron James, who is still a basketball super genius, is leaning towards cutting Steph off. But surprise, this is a keeper, and Draymond rolls in for a sweet layup. So to put it all together, in the basketball court, up is away from the basket and down is closer to the basket. CP3 says, you just came up here, right? He's saying, I don't like that. Instead, come down, either there or there, and that gives you the option to either do a real handoff to Chris Paul or a real handoff to Clay, or he can fake it, and now he's close enough that he can keep the ball and roll to the basket. When he comes up here, then he's so high that, that the defender doesn't do anything. He's just been sitting here waiting to see what unfolds. So if Wiggins were closer, he can pitch it or keep the ball and roll to the basket. You just came up there, right? Come down. So now it's pitch or it's keep. I can't help talking about one more play. Chris Paul 
with the ball. Jonathan Kaminga setting the screen for a high pick and roll. D'Lo, it looks like he's going under the screen, but Jonathan Kaminga decides, hey, you switched on to me, no take backs. And he just starts running to try to force D'Lo to switch to him. Torian Prince has already switched to Chris Paul, so D'Lo has to stay with Jonathan Kaminga. And this is exactly the matchup the Warriors want, so JK can dunk the smaller D'Lo into the basket. Chris Paul immediately sees this and throws the entry pass. LeBron sees it all unfolding, and while this ball is in midair, he tells D'Lo, switch to the guy in the corner, and I'm going to take on Jonathan Kaminga. So a beautiful scram switch while the ball is in transit. And now JK finds himself posting up LeBron instead of the smaller D'Lo. And I love that JK does not force this. He could be forgiven for trying his luck on LeBron, but instead he stays in the flow of the Kerr offense. Steph recognizes that, okay, this is JK in the post. That's an automatic split cut from us. So he puts his thumb over his shoulder saying, use my screen. Steph goes one way, screening for Clay. Clay goes the other way. Max Christie gets nailed by Steph's screen. Spencer Dinwiddie is very reluctant to leave Steph Curry. He sees that Steph is setting a screen, but he's taking no chances because no one ever got fired for following Steph Curry. Clay Thompson happily pops into the open space, and JK with a very solid pass to Clay. Beautiful. Let's wrap up with a celebration audit. First thing to notice, it's customary to point at whoever threw the pass that led to the shot, and that's JK. But watch what Steph does. He actually turns and points to Chris Paul. So Steph Curry is giving ultimate credit to Chris Paul for getting JK that deep post position, which led to the whole split cut. Jerome Robinson pulling out the three gun. It's also like a three seeking missile locked on to Clay, who was the actual implementer of the three. Lester Quinones also busting out the three gun. It looks like a three gun crossed with some, I don't know if it's a shotgun or whether it's like a bow and arrow thing he's trying to do. But I think that the, the lack of clarity in his metaphor is messing with his three tracking, his three dar, because look, he's locked on Draymond. I don't know. I, I think I would have to rate this as a false positive because Draymond did not make the pass or shoot the three. He might get like fifth author credit on this or something. I don't know. So Lester, you gotta, I think, go back and recalibrate your instrument. Although we appreciate the thought. <laughs>